Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. And like we do every week, we're here to end that week with you with The Last Call. That's right. This is The Last Call. We are talking about our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Isn't that right, Jack? That's right. Whether it's a busy week or a slow week, it doesn't matter. The most important time of the week is getting those orders in before that FOC cut off. That really sets the tone for everything else that goes on. Uh, so before you're chasing that back issue and finding yourself with FOMO, pre-order ahead of the game. Get those uh, books locked in. Get those orders secured and uh, get that lowest possible price. Yeah, it's a little bit slower week for Final Order Cutoff this week. We've had some, I don't know if it's a slower week or we just had some monster weeks the couple weeks prior yeah. to this. But we're going to get into it right now, starting with the first one from Marvel. We talk about those plug and plays, and this is one of them. We're talking about Venom number 31. Yeah, Venom has been rock solid. Um, this is going on probably about six months. There's been a resurgence in Venom. Now, there, realistically, there was never a down period with this book. Um, but when you just kind of compare certain periods uh, within the series, it had gotten kind of to a point where um, there had been maybe a lull in the story post Absolute Carnage leading into this recent kind of run where we had everything with uh codex um and uh you know all everything else and uh you know first appearances a lot of late printings got everybody excited but now we're coming up on king and black and this is all going to be null focused we know what Null's popularity is in the comic community so i would expect um, to see a lot of attention on these issues. Um, you know, just the tagline alone from this issue, the King in Black arrives, is enough, I think, to really draw attention to the market. Yeah, before Donny Cates, it was also, um, I mean, I suffered a little bit of venom fatigue. It seemed like Marvel is shoving venom down your throat. That's what we talked about recently with those venomized variants that came out right before it. And the, the story went bad, but it wasn't as, it didn't have as much buzz behind it that Donny Cates has added. And of course, like we said, Issue 31 hits final or cut off this coming Monday night. Here's another pretty much plug and play. Anytime this issue comes out, we're talking about it. We are talking about Strange Academy number six. Yeah, it's funny. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we had started to maybe see the momentum slow down with Strange Academy. And we got comments in the comment section of the video saying, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, Strange Academy has been absolute fire. And, you know, that's the thing is, is it, a lot of it is due to what we look at the secondary market to try to gauge reaction. But, you know, reader buzz is definitely on an individual level. And you have to kind of see that build up over time because you got to hear people passionately talk about a book. Um, and certainly that told us that there are enough people really still on board paying attention to this series uh, beyond the hype, you know, beyond the ability to say flip some books and make some money. Um, so it was it was exciting to see. um Scotty Young, the writer of this series, talked during Baltimore Comic-Con, um, which, of course, was a virtual Comic-Con, um, talk about, you know, the the kind of challenges, but more the the opportunities with this story, with the fact that he has characters that people don't aren't familiar with and the fact that it's in a, a unique setting within the Marvel Universe, within a school um, we've talked about the, the, the long-term potential of Strange Academy. Um, and I, I think that that's going to continue. And, you know, I really pay attention to uh, a lot of these variants, especially these cover Bs. I mean, we're at a point in the series going into issue six where, like we said, we've removed a lot of the flippers, the, the immediate gratification people. Um, and now we're talking long-term plays. And a lot of these books are going to be uh, lower printed and, and under-ordered. And the, this is kind of the area where you start to see some of these books a year, two, three years down the road. And you're like, man, I can't believe how much that book is selling for. Right. Yeah. And then we talking about how it kind of slowed down a bit. Um, another thing, observation from that was that you're starting to see copies on the shelves at your LCS two days past release, yep. where that yep. wasn't the case before. No doubt the story's still a fantastic story. Great series. Sticking with Marvel for a third time, we're getting that sword number one coming out this week. <laughs> we're getting that sword number one hitting final cutoff as well, right? Yeah, and you know, I gotta be honest with you, my my reaction, I think Brian, probably the same as yours, is 
another one of these kind of British titles, another one of the, uh, you know, these, another X title. And we've talked about um, how you and I kind of had some doubts. Um, but the positive of this, I think, is that we've got our guy, Al Ewing, um, on the helm of this series. So you kind of, you know, you're in good hands as far as a writer. Um, and there's certainly a lot of people on board with uh, the entire kind of sword, uh, Captain Britain, uh, sort of, uh, you know, the British Marvel takeover. Um, so, you know, hey, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I know there's a lot of Disney Plus rumors, um, certainly Easter eggs throughout the MCU. Um, but we'll see if this goes beyond just another new relaunch. Shifting from Marvel for a second, we're getting over to Dark Horse, and we get Overwatch number one. There's no doubt when Overwatch came out as a video game, a lot of people were behind it. A lot of people still playing it. If they're not playing Fortnite, they might be playing Overwatch, but we're getting issue number one from Dark Horse. Yeah, and see, I, I think we've seen the evolution of uh, video game titles um, recently. Uh, I'd say for about five years, there's been a, a kind of a, a section of our hobby that has really been a proponent of these, these type of properties. Um, and, you know, certainly my philosophy on uh, comic book collecting and speculation and, and investing is kind of to respect people's fandoms, you know, allow people to buy what they like and certainly respect that there are communities outside of ones that maybe I'm a regular member of. And, uh, you know, th this kind of like video game uh, comic community was big on certain titles. And we've seen it come to fruition with Witcher. Um, now uh, there's a lot of heat behind God's War. Um, and now we're, we're going to start to get a new Overwatch series, I think. And then you look at that combined with what Fortnite's got going on with Marvel. Um, the year, we're seeing these two worlds cross over more and more. And I think Hollywood, who had kind of dabbled in the uh, video game adaptation world and maybe kind of unsuccessfully at first, has kind of now kind of found their, their way with the, the streaming platforms, which open up so many more doors for uh, different vehicles to tell stories, whether it's animated or whether it's through, through a series, whether it's binge or weekly or how, what, whatever you want to do. You now have that full customization to be able to make more properties come to life. So I think these video game properties, which maybe were just a small segment uh, it, within the community, similar to say like a licensed property book, um, think like, a, a, you know, a Ninja Turtles or a G.I. Joe. Um, maybe now that's uh, a, a very different game uh, when we look at what the last several years of video game properties have turned out to be. Yeah, and I like books like these, especially when it adds more backstory if you're, if you're a big fan of the game. One of those books in particular that added a fantastic series to the video game was DC's Injustice. Getting over to DC for a second, we return to that anthology series with Batman Black and White number one. This is going to be that prestige format, but also issue number one has a Peach Momoko variant. That's right. And uh, it, it's a really kind of a, a sharp, different um, variant for a Batman book, um, certainly within Peach Momoko's wheelhouse. Uh, but definitely looks different for a Batman book. Um, Batman Black and White has never really been my thing, full, full admission. Um, but it, this is what I think the third volume now. Um, that they're going on of this series. So uh, it's certainly carved out its niche. And it, we've seen more and more success from these kind of like Elseworld Batman stories. People cannot get enough of Batman, Gotham City. Um, and I think there's just so much room for, for different creators uh, to take on um, different takes on these characters, whether it's Sean Murphy's kind of world or whether or not, uh, you know, it's, it's everything that uh, we see Jeff Johns doing or um, whether or not it's kind of like this noir black and white setting. Um, either way, uh, more Batman, the better is kind of the way I look at the comic market right now. So if you're a big Batman fan, we got a new Batman number one, you got to be on board. Right. So now we're going to shift gears for a second, get into over what we love odd to talk about on this channel. We're talking about those indie comic books. And this is the indie showcase portion of the show brought to you by Black Cape Comics. 
all the books we talk about, as well as the ones we're about to talk about in the Indie Showcase. You can pre-order at BlackCapeComics.com. They have their own store exclusives up there as well. And fantastic art prints, don't they, Jack? Oh, absolutely. And they are some of uh, the co- most creative producers of uh, exclusive variants that you will find. So definitely pay attention to Black Cape Comics. Make sure that you are following them on social media, um, as well as regularly checking the site, because you are not going to want to be late when they do a drop. Right. And the first one we'll talk about in the, in the showcase this week is from AWA Upshot. And we get that erratic Number one, I'm really looking forward to this one. Kind of has that Miles Morales type feel. Maybe it's because it's a teenager. But the problem is his superpowers only last for 10 minutes at a time. Yeah, I definitely feel the Miles Morales vibe. Um, I, I I love the look of the character. Um, and on top of it, the creative team, Carrie Andrews, uh, you know, has done work for both big two companies. Um has been, uh, you know, certainly a uh, major player, both on the writing and art side. And Brian Reber, who's done a lot of um, amazing color work on um, things everywhere from Valiant to to DC Comics. Now we're seeing um, here doing the art. This is a great creative team. So this is a a book that I kind of expect to deliver. So don't sleep on this. It is tough to do um, creator-owned superhero books. That has always kind of proven to be a, a difficult thing because you're always comparing it to the big two i mean even when we do it positively we couldn't help but make this comparison to miles morales and that and that always sets you up for something difficult but i will say we are seeing more and more creators really take a shot at this um kind of creator owned superhero universe because i mean at, hey uh, from from the long game of it um every movie studio what we hear is that they want in the superhero game but you know disney's got marvel and uh you know a TNT and Warner Brothers has DC, so there's only so many places you can go. Sony's got Valiant, so uh, and and part of the Spider-Man universe. So you know, there's so many other movie companies that would love, love, love to get involved. So uh, I'm rooting for this one. I hope this one does well. So pay attention to this one, and I think we're going to see some cool variants for this one as well. Yeah, it's definitely got some great cover art by what Mike did out of Junior, I believe, yes. as well. Getting over from AWA, we're going over to Vault for a second. They're keeping that momentum going. A lot of buzz behind the first issue. So we're getting Giga number two hitting final or cutoff this week as well. Yeah, this was a big hit. Um, and again, we, we said we don't know whether it's necessarily um, subject matter um, or cover art related, but like who really cares? Um, but also, there was a lot of buzz within the industry for this one. And this was something that we always pay attention to because it tends to indicate reader buzz. Um, you're not going to often see people lend their name to reviews of books saying, hey, you know, publicly, this book is great before a book comes out if you're a name creator, uh, unless, you know, it, the book is going to back it up. So uh, um, we saw a lot of that. So I'm not surprised. Uh, pay attention to this one. This one could be a sleeper. We tend to see a 50% drop off in print runs going from issue number one to issue number two. And with, you know, less of the, like the sexy cover art that we saw on issue number one. Um, This could be a sleeper. This could be a $10 to $15 book. We've seen that before from some of these. Yeah, and the last one we're talking about in the showcase, this was actually one that we probably should have talked about last week, but it's not always in Diamond's final order cutoff. But we're talking about Mad Cave Studios and the return of Knights of the Golden Sun, one of our favorite series on here. We've talked so much about this series. Issue number eight is hitting store shelves December 9th. If you cannot get it from your LCS, you can order it from madcavestudios.com as well. But Jack, we're excited for this series return, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. This was uh, the series that introduced most of us to Mad Cave Studios. Um, and I think it really kind of put them on the map and began the uh, ball of momentum that was running uh, throughout their kind of initial releases into where they are now where you know they've got a diverse array of creators and uh books um that they're dropping and to come back for a second volume um of knights of the golden sun and they're going to be coming back with honor and curse as well and uh you know knights of the golden sun also coming from it's a unique title because it's it's not only is it kind of like the flagship book for Mad Cave Studios. It's also a, a, a big popular title that comes from uh, the owner and CEO of the company, Mark London, who is the writer of the series. So it, it, this is a big one. This is uh, 
kind of for Mad Cave, this is McFarlane-esque. So uh, we're definitely excited. This is one of those books, like when we introduced it to people um, and people would, it, back in the day, would give us the, oh, you're pumping and dumping a book, like, right? You, you're involved in a exclusive variant. So that could be the only reason why you're talking about it. Um, this would be one that once they read the book, it, people would immediately get on board. Uh, and that's how you know something's a hit. So I'm excited as a reader, as a fan, um, as a collector to, to get more Knights of the Golden Sun. Right. We're actually going to have Mark London on this channel here very soon. So stay tuned to that. And we'll probably be doing maybe Knights of the Golden Sun trade perfect giveaway. I don't know, but stay tuned. And if you are interested in exclusives, friends of the channel, 616 Comics does have an exclusive rant for this up on their site at the616comics.com. This brings us to the portion of the show that we always think is important, but it's a little light this week, wouldn't you say, Jack? It is, it is, but doesn't mean that there isn't an important uh, entry into the list because we talked about um, Giga number one and its release and sellout and going on to issue number two this week during the Indie Showcase. And there is a second printing um, on this week's uh, FOC, not one you want to sleep on. Certainly we see what these late printings are doing. So if you are on board with those first print covers, be sure to check out that second printing cover from Vault Comics. That's right. Giga number one's hitting second print. And like he said, don't sleep on it because we all saw what some second prints did for other vault titles, just like these Savage yes. Shores. You never know. But there it is, guys. There's our picks for Final Order Cutoff. This is Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.